In this more informal video, I'm just going to show you how to apply some of those blend modes that we've seen before inside Substance Painter. If you want to see the designer video, check out the next one. So we're going to start with add and I have a file that's set up to demonstrate this to you. There's just a base fill layer with some nice glossy yellow and there's a black layer with dirt on top that has a black mask. So if you want to use add for masks, um, say that you, for example, add a generator. We're just going to pick a simple mask builder like this. And you want to have some more spots all around. So uh, what I would do then in a standard case is you'd have a fill. I'm going to pick one that easily adds. So for example, this one here with the stains, it's nice because um, if I change the scale, let's set that to four. You get some nice white spots that are everywhere. I can tweak them a bit more so that you can see them clearly like that. And right now it's overriding it. So I'd like to have this mask and the spots over the top. And that's where add comes in. So if I switch the blend mode of the fill to linear dodge add, you can see that I have both of them combined. So it goes from single mask from the generator to having those applied on top of it. So it keeps the white from both areas. Then to do the height, well, height's interesting with add. It actually already does it by default. So I'm just gonna jump into this channel over here and I'm gonna add a black mask to that. And we're just gonna paint a little bit of height in that mask. So let's do that then increase the height a bit so that you can see it. Then I've set it up so there's some displacement. So we've got that height coming out. And by default, you can actually see if I jump to the height channel, the height is already set to add. So this is the default behavior inside Substance Painter. So that means if I have another channel with height, so let me increase this one a bit and then mask it again with a black mask, take a smaller brush. And if I now paint on top of that, you can see how it's combining and adding on top of each other. So it's not overriding, it's not um, canceling each other out, it's adding, so you build up on top of each other. Every height does that by default. Next up, we have subtract. So I'm gonna use this same dirt mask and I'll add another generator to that and we'll pick mask editor this time. And let me just play a bit with the contrast and the balance to really push that one out like so. And I want to get some harsh chipping going on at the edges. I want to remove parts from this. And there's two ways to do it, but subtract is one of them. Again, I would add a fill and then try and find a mask that has some uh, interesting shapes into it. So I, ideally it has high contrast, so it drives the point home. So let's take this grunge, for example, drop it in. I'll tile it, uh, let's say three times. I'm going to push up the balance and the contrast a little bit. And again, as you see, it's overriding it. If I set this to subtract now, there you go. It's doing some really harsh subtraction and chipping there. So you go from full to subtracted chipping. And mainly what you'll get with this is your transitions will be a bit harder. See how it's really crunchy and hard? That's what subtract is going to give you. Then for subtract in height, uh, well, that's actually interesting. Um, it's not actually something you'll need often inside Substance Painter. So let me just paint some height here. And if I jump up to another layer, you see how this height slider, you can go positive or you can go negative. This means that uh, we're currently working with HDR height. So this is high dynamic range and it really changes the nature of how things work. So you have to be a bit careful. So I can set this positive and uh, let me just paint on the mask a bit like so. Right now it's set to normal still. If I set it to subtract, it's going to remove it. This is going to push in, but you see here, it starts to behave strangely. It's not pushing in. So my, my tip for using height in here, there's really not much of a reason to do that. You could use linear dodge add, but just go to a negative height value and it's going to push it in and you'll get the same results. That way you can avoid the way things work. See, see how this is very confusing. Once I set it negative, it starts to invert things. Usually you don't want to invert things. You just want to make everything lower or everything higher. So I'd recommend not to use subtract too much for height in Substance Painter. Next, we've got multiply. So multiply is really, after add, it's probably the most used one. So again, 
I'm going to add a generator here. It's up the level like so we can see it everywhere. And we want to mask this out a bit. We want to reduce it a bit, but we want to have soft modulating masking. We don't want to have that crunchy hard stuff we get from the uh, subtract. So again, I'll add a fill or grab a grunge mask. Uh, so I like to use ones that are fairly contrasted. Ideally when blending, they're pretty contrasted with, uh, with multiply and add at least. So take this grunge map, set it up to repeat, uh, let's say about three times. Make sure I've got some, uh, some nice big contrasted areas like that. If I now set this to multiply, see how we're really masking out certain areas. So all the parts that are in the original map where they are white, those are the ones that we're gonna keep. So set this to multiply. See, those are the ones that we keep and the black ones are being masked out. So you can really use this to reduce which parts of a mask are visible. And then if you play with the balance, you can choose how much is visible versus how much is hidden. And it's a much softer way to blend things out than when using subtract. So just to show you, if I set this to subtract, first of all, it inverts the way it works. And second, it's much harsher and crisper. You can actually tell, see from the cutoffs, that it works a bit different. So just keep in mind, those two work for either way. Um, I tend to use multiply a bit more just because it's a bit softer and you have more control. Then uh, multiply for height. That one's actually pretty interesting. Let me just clear this. So going to multiply for height, let me just paint up some height again. So I've got some height. If you want to blend on other height with multiply, so this one's right now, I've changed it from linear dodge add to multiply. And the height is positive. It works in a bit of an unpredictable way, which doesn't make it very useful, see? So it's actually inverting things. It's pushing up the lower part and pushing down the higher part when we go over it. It's very dependent on the values of things, especially uh, for this, this top one, see if I increase it. But interestingly, height becomes a bit more useful if you set it to negative, because then you can use it to sort of modulate things a bit. Now, again, I still wouldn't use this often. Just reset this and reduce my flow a bit but you can use it to push things down in a softer way than you would with a regular sculpting. Now, again, it's a rare method. I wouldn't use it much. The HDR nature of things makes multiply difficult to, uh, to use. And then uh, next up we have got, so divide is in painter. I almost never use this, but I can show you the case for uh, when you would use it. I wouldn't use it for height, only for masks. So say we have two fills. Let me just add a fill here and take a procedural. So in this case, I'm going to grab, uh, let's see, clouds two, drop a clouds two on here. And I'm gonna drop another clouds on there. And this time it's going to be the same one like that to show you the mask. But what I'm gonna do is in the noise parameters, I'm gonna change the disorder just a little bit. So I'll set this disorder a little bit higher, like a very small value. See, so it's a little bit different and then set it to divide. And what that does is it highlights the differences between things, right? So I get an inverted mask of the differences. This mask by itself isn't super useful. Uh, you have to actually punch out the details. So you'd have to add a levels to it. You might wanna invert it, and then you might wanna crunch these things together to really create that sparse uh, difference highlight mask. As, and it works best if the value differences are very small. So 0 0.01 in disorder gives me this type of thing. Now again, it's finicky in Painter. I wouldn't use it very often, but it's there if you want to create a specific mask like this. It can lead to some interesting experiments. Next up is the Min Blend Mode. Now for Min, I'm not gonna bother with showing it on a, uh, a visual mask like this dirt here. I'm just gonna show it with height. Why? Because visually Min looks the same as other blend modes. There's no point to use it for visual masks. It only makes a difference for height. Also to add, Min is probably the hardest one to use inside Painter because of a few specifics. I'll try and make this clear. So I've got one layer here, which has a square mask like that, set to a certain height. And I've got another layer here, which is set to a round soft mask like that. And what I want is I'd like Min to cut off the edges of that square mask. So it looks like I'm doing a kind of Boolean operation there. Now, if I set this blend mode from lighten to darken Min, then you see that really not much is happening here. It just doesn't seem to work. And the reason for that is the way that Painter treats transparent areas. You don't get this problem in Designer, you do get it in Painter. This mask being masked means that all the black parts are transparent zero data. 
and they mess up the way that Min works. So you have to fill everything around it with another color and then do the total composited one as a Min. So how do you do that? You create a folder. Let's call this one a Min folder. I'll drop this height in and then I'm going to create another fill, which I'm going to put at the bottom. And that one's just going to be height set to zero. So what's happening now, this fills everything up. This layer is just masking that one little dot over here to uh, a higher value. And then I set the entire folder. I'm going to switch this one back to normal, switch this one to normal as well, and then switch the entire folder to darken min. And then you can get that specific effect. So now if I change the height of this one here, see how it's actually slicing through and taking a Boolean operation of uh, those two values. And I can change this one as well, make it higher, make it lower can affect the, the exact slice between them. You have to do this specific setup. It gets even more problematic inside um, masks with paint. You kind of have to do the same thing. Fill everything in your paint with one color, then paint the actual color over it. So Min is a bit annoying. If you really want it, this is the way to set it up. Keep those transparent pixels in mind inside Painter. So Max does kind of the same thing. Uh, that's the other blend mode. So if I just switch this one for Min, as I just showed to Max, you get the opposite thing, like two meshes shoved into each other. You see, they're just combined like that. It also requires a fill layer at the bottom to set everything to a default value and then to add them together afterwards. Now this one you can use inside regular masks. Let me try and show you that. So I've set up my fills. First one is just a brick shape, and I've added it as a fill with planar projection because it's easier to show. Next up is a paraboloid shape, which is also set to not UV wrap. And if I move those around with the normal blending modes in a mask, you see that it's just clipping and overriding the other one. If I would switch this to min, it starts to act a little bit funny and cutting out at the edges, but it works really well if you switch it to max. If I switch it to max, you see that it's treating it as just two meshes being shoved together and uh, doing that really cool type of height combination 3D modeling operation. So this is possible within a mask just like that. It's easier to do with planar projections because you can move them around, you can modify them, but it's still a little trickier to do. If you're building complex height maps though, I, I would make use of the max blend mode like this. Then lastly, we've got those two selective blending modes, add sub and uh, overlay. So we're gonna go for add sub first. Uh, I'll show you how to use this in a mask in a way that really makes uh, sense for me. I'm gonna add a generator here and I want one with a really clear transition. So let's take a position one here. So let's highlight that, looks like this. Uh, let's make sure our exact transition sits a little bit more in the middle move it towards the top. Say this is some kind of dirt that's fallen from the top or whatever. And this transition looks too fake. I want to break it up. That's where you would bring in add sub. So I'm gonna add a fill here. I'm gonna jump into my grunges and we'll just pick a nice crunchy grunge and maybe make it a bit smaller too, something like that. Now, the order is really important with an add sub. As I mentioned before, if I'm going to add sub this one over that first mask, it doesn't look like it's doing it in the transition. You actually have to swap them around. Your base grunge will be at the bottom. Your transition gradient, so the main position one, is going to be at the top. So I'll set it to signed edition add sub. And there you go. I get this really nice crunchy transition in um, fade of the gradient. It helps if you pump up the contrast a bit more. So let's let's choose, uh, set the balance a bit and maybe even swap this one out for a different map that doesn't have such obvious gradients How about this one here. Yeah, that works even better. So this is really my favorite way to use add sub. Works great for transitions like this. And then just to show you what that looks like for the material, you get this really cool type of transition mask going on. Then for using add sub in height, Generally, I would just recommend to avoid it. It tends to be uh, quite difficult to use. We've talked about this before in Add and Subtract. They do work there, but Add Sub is very uncontrollable, so I just generally don't use it for height there. So let's go over into uh, using our Overlay Blend Mode. So I'm going to add another generator to show you a different way to use this. And again, we want to break this up and make it a bit more interesting. So again, we can add a fill to this and then pick some kind of interesting grunge. If I now choose overlay in the blend mode, so it's down here under add sub, you see that it's doing a soft transition into the uh, little 
transition areas. So instead of that hard, crunchy effect, you get a fading type of effect where your gradients are. This can be useful for some cases, and if you've paid attention, the order is actually different for these two guys. You can swap them around if I put Mask Editor at the top and then set that one to Overlay. It, it works differently. So Add Sub works with the main gradient at the top. Overlay works with the main gradient at the bottom. So this makes them a little bit more finicky to set up and use. Uh, you have to be a bit more careful with how you do things. But in general, they're good for two uh, different use cases. And then using overlay and height, uh, it's very rare to do that because it uses multiply and screen blend modes. This gets very complicated with the HDR nature of height. So generally I don't do it either. Add sub and overlay are just for doing mass transitions and creating something like this. And then obviously once I've finished, uh, once you do something like this, you can combine it with even more blend modes. If I add another fill on top of this, I grab another grunge like that. I play with the balance a bit. And for this one, for example, I can say multiply. So you can break up your transition, have it masked out in certain areas. And once you master this type of thing, you understand the different blend modes, you're well on your way to creating your own advanced procedural masks without any limits.